our strategical direction and how um, we want to develop our observation and, um, and research mission in the aquarium. Um, but to start with, I wanted to talk to you about, I wanted to tell you the story of the, the Catarina pupfish. And some of you might, might know this, this fish. Uh, his name is uh, Megipsilon aporus from the Superdon family. It had has been discovered in, uh, in 1961. And the name Megapsilon is in reference to the huge crease in, uh, in males, and the uh, aporus is in reference to the lack of pores in the cephalic uh, sensory system. This fish is endemic to um, a freshwater spring in, uh, in El Potosi, so it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's endemic to Mexico, but it's microendemic to this spring uh, at El Potosi. And this spring is also home to Cypridon alvarezi and the crayfish Canberus alvarezi that are also endemic to the spring. The habitat description from 1972 mentioned the presence of a main pond with an inner stream and some secondary ponds. The flow was constant and there was clear water year-round in the pond. 6,000 individuals were found within the aquatic vegetation during an expedition in 1968. By 1974, individuals of largemouth bass, Microptilus amoides, were collected at El Potosi, and the abundance of megapsilon was significantly lower. In 1976, a team eradicated the largemouth bass, removing more than 290 uh, individuals from the spring. The habitat remained in good condition for 15 years, but in 1985, the spring was reduced to 10% of its former size, by 1986, only a shallow irrigation ditch and small tributary remained. The rapid degradation of the habitat as a result of water extraction increased the need to maintain species in captivity to avoid the extinction. Since 1984, the Catarina pupfish remain in captivity in a management unit specifically for the conservation of the species. In the early 90s, the Catarina pupfish was maintained at the New York Aquarium and the Universidad Autónoma de Nuevo León and at the Children's Aquarium at Fair Park in Dallas as part of a program called Emerging Rescue of Mexican Fish Species in Imminent Danger of Extinction. By 1990, more than 80 wells deeper uh, than 100 meters had been dug for irrigation of corns and potato fields in El Potosi in the Sandia Valleys causing the desiccation of spring and creeks in the region. The Catarina pupfish was considered to be extinct in a while by 1994, and in 1995, El Potosi spring was completely dry. Individuals of the Catarina pupfish were maintained in various places, including St. Louis Potosi in Mexico, Denver and Arkansas, in the USA, Zaragoza in Spain, and in Germany. However, the species was particularly sensitive to environmental conditions and prone to infection. In 2011, most individuals of the captive population succumbed to mycobacterial infection, yeah. and those that remained were too weak to foster yeah. In 2012, the Children's Aquarium at Fair Park in Dallas held the last surviving population with only 20 individuals. The last two males were used in an attempt <coughs> to save the species by hybridization and by crossing with Cypridodont alvarezi. The breeding was successful, resulting in over 30 newborn individuals. However, all females were affected by mycobacteriosis and all eventually died, and the species was considered extinct. The extinction of the Caterina pupfish is a reminder of the vulner vulnerability of aquatic systems and is unfortunately the perfect example of what freshwater fishes are facing across the planet. This graph shows that since 1970, freshwater vertebrate population has decreased by 84%. So zoological institutions and aquaria can contribute to have a significant impact on species conservation. Microendemic species like the Caterina pupfish can rapidly become extinct under threat. But the size and life history make them good candidates for ex situ management. Ex situ management for species conservation is now globally recognized as one of the options that can contribute to species conservation. It can allow to offset the effect of threats by supporting a wild population 
to buy time by setting up rescue population or insurance population uh, when the species are facing extinction, or it can lead to reintroduction and restore wild population. These are examples of Mexican freshwater fish species that otherwise would be extinct, as they no longer exist in the wild, but have been rescued and are, and are now managed ex situ, mainly within zoological institutions. It also led to successful reintroduction in the case of Zug and Ticus Ticker. It appeared therefore obvious that at the Aquarium Tropical, with 70% of our collection being freshwater fish, and with our strong expertise in maintaining the species since 1931, we have a role to play to prevent species extinction, both ex situ and in situ. So I bring a place a new strategy and developing a new tailor-made facilities to rescue population of critically endangered species following the recommendation by the regional collection plan from ESA. We can also manage species and increase the number of captive populations to improve the genetic diversity in the case of species that are already maintained in captivity. Um, we can contribute to the research to better manage captive species and produce populations that are fit for reintroduction and looking more particularly at producing disease-free population. And we can contribute to the research in species life history strategy to inform conservation action. I want to talk, I want to, talk to you as well about um, this expertise and knowledge that we have on fish that is also valuable in situ or in situ conservation action. Fish keeping expertise is valuable in the field, <coughs> and most notably with fish handling, fish transportation, and water quality monitoring. As a director of the Tropical Aquarium, I'm coordinating an in situ freshwater fish conservation program in Madagascar called Fishnet Madagascar along the Mboa River. It focuses on, on five species, three of them are critically endangered. One of them is endangered and the other one is desert efficient and hasn't been described yet. The program has different projects. Uh, one of them is uh, the, uh, the setting up of insurance population uh, within the, the community along the Mboa River. Those ponds, um, so we, we set up like, insurance population um, Sorry, we're setting up a community pond in which the local community um, will uh, breed the, the local fish from the river. Um, and thus, um, those ponds will, will be used as an insurance population and will be used as well for the local community as a source of food and, and, and revenue. We are working on the translocation feasibility study that has two sides of it. One is the water quality monitoring along the Amboa Boa River. So we're working with local people to collect um, water quality data on six different sites along the river um, and this helps us to understand um, the environmental and the seasonal variation uh, between uh, where the fishes are located and where we want to move them. So to give you a bit more background information, the, the river we're working on, the headwaters are located within the, the boundaries of the national park but we can't find the, the, the fish here, the fish aren't present there, they're present further further below where, uh, where there's more threats and we're looking at the possibility of um, setting up so secure population within the park so we are trying to compare the difference uh, of uh, the difference between the, the environmental parameters between the where we can find the fish and where we want to put them so there's lots of data that are generated here that could be used for fish base um, the other side of the translocation feasibility study is a disease risk analysis to understand uh, in partnership with the Zoological Society of London to understand whether there's any deep, uh, disease risk involved by moving this fish. So uh, does it represent a risk for the fish themselves but as well for the habitat host? We're using habitat and fish population monitoring as well with uh, the aquarist uh, from the Aquarium Tropical in partnership um, with the Aquatic Population um, Laboratory in Antonina River. And finally, we're doing lots of community engagement, and uh, at the moment, um, there's someone from Madagascar, Vocage, which is uh, an environmental um, organization from Madagascar that is conducting um, a, a perception study with the local community to understand the perception of the environment. <coughs> and, um, 
um, set up tailor-made activity, uh, conservation activity with the, with the local community. And they're also looking at dam management along the, the river to understand how those dams uh, are, are being used. And the last slide is, um, is like um, potential data in, that we're going to gather or we are gathering that could be useful for, for fish base uh, within the ex situ part and the in situ part as well. So, for example, the inventory of captive population, and particularly the threatened species, uh, the pictures indeed. Um, in situ, we've got the geographical ranges, uh, environmental parameters, and seasonal variation, um, but also life history strategy and morphometrics that we are collecting in the field, but also at the Thank you for your attention. Uh, do you have any questions?